Welcome everyone, in this video I will be sharing the top strategies and actionable tips that really work to improve the driver retention for your trucking business. Make sure you stay till the end because at the end I talk about one secret thing. If you put this in place for your trucking business, you're going to have way more drivers sticking with your business and bringing more drivers for you. So make sure you stick till the end of the video and I'm so excited to share it with you. So let's take a deep dive into it. Awesome, so I'm going to give you a really big mind shift in, in this driver retention topic and like how people approach it. You know, like that's the wrong way of approaching where you think like, oh my God, I lost, like we're losing drivers, we need to figure this out. You know, like that's a panic mode reaction to it. You're fixing the problem in the moment, you're not fixing where the problem really starts occurring. I'm gonna break it down for you. So if you haven't watched the video that I did on the driver journey or you haven't picked up the driver journey, go do it. The link is above in the description to watch the video and also the full explanation where I teach you what the driver journey is. Uh, the link is below in the description. It's basically step from a driver not knowing anything about your trucking company to basically seating them in your truck. And then once you've seated them in your trucks, then moving them to a place where they're basically your raving fans and bringing you drivers. And that brings the point that I wanna mention today. So. Let's just cut out the part of the driver journey. There's seven steps. I'm going to only take four right now to really break it down for you. So the first one is hire. You know, that's where your retention problem starts. So they get hired. And then in the driver journey, again, if you don't know driver journey, the link is above. Go watch that video. It's gonna make total, a lot more sense. And this is the way you should be approaching driver retention. Okay, so hire, and then you get a driver. This is how a driver moves in your trucking business. This is their experience with your business, okay? Keep that in mind. So uh, for any of you who don't know, then they become an advocate. And then the last place they move to is promote or promoter, okay? So let me tell you exactly what this is. And this is gonna make so much more sense for the issue of driver retention, okay? Instead of like going through, oh, talk nice to drivers and ask them how they're feeling. Like, not that kind of stuff. Like, actionable stuff, no fluff, okay? So, hire is where they get hired. Excited is basically where you're getting them excited that this is a great place that they have joined and they love being there, okay? It's, it's a little bit of a shift. Like, they're moving above in the experience they have with your trucking business. Now, when they go into advocate, this is the next level where they move. And advocate is where they're actually, really if somebody asks, like if I walked to that driver randomly at a truck stop and I was like, hey John, how do you like working at ABC Trucking? And they're like, yeah, they're great people. I love being there. It's an awesome place to work with, uh, work at. Okay, so they're advocating about you. So that's the next place. You know, somebody could be excited, but they're not still sure about your trucking business. So the next place you wanna move them is advocate. And don't worry, I'm gonna break this all down for you very quickly and how it sinks in. And then the last part is promoter. Promoter is where if I was to talk to a driver on a truck stop and ask them like, hey, how do you find about uh, this trucking company that you work for? And they're like, yeah, it's a great trucking company. I'm like, whoa, you, you know what, John? No, you're wrong. There's this other trucking company in Mississippi uh, who I, my buddy works or I work at and they're way better, they pay you. And then this John driver gets into a fight almost to, to demonstrate or prove that guy that no, my company is the best. And that's how you want all your drivers to be. You know, so your panic mode is off on driver retention. Think of like, how can I convert all my drivers into a promoter? And these are the guys who are actually going to turn into something that I call your raving fans, okay? They're your true raving fans. These are the guys who are going to bring the most amount of referrals you know, like most amount of drivers to your trucking business. I'm gonna tell you all that in this video. But I'm gonna to stick to the point of like, how can you move all your higher drivers into the promoter phase? Forget about driver retention. This is gonna solve all your problems and make a better trucking business, okay? So the way to solve your driver retention problem is, and let me break it down step by step too. What happens here? When the driver gets hired, who were, he or she talks to who? A recruiter, right? 
or your HR, whoever may be, you know, like very low chance of HR, but uh, in trucking, but recruiter, recruiting manager, whoever may be. Once they get hired, they get assigned a truck and then they moved on to a driver manager, right? Or smaller guys, planner, or whoever may be, right? Your logistics manager, whoever may be, who is basically giving them the loads or whoever may be. Their job is to basically bring drivers in. These guys is to basically make money in the business and keep the drivers and keep them running, okay? Now what happens is, if these guys are basically people who just clock in and clock out, you're gonna lose a lot of drivers. Let me be very honest with you. You need extra word people here. You just need extra words people, period. There's no secret sauce, there's nothing to it because let me give you a real example of this. I have a trucking business that we help and they run only OTR and they go all over the place. They're a great trucking business, been in business for over 65 years. Um, and what happened was the driver was such a nice guy, he got hired I think from Georgia and this planner or the dispatcher uh, was like, hey man, okay, I'm gonna send you to Washington, I'm gonna send you to uh, New York or whatever it may be. So he kept him moving and the expectation of the driver was he or she is gonna be out for, he's gonna be out for like three to four weeks and then home for like four days or something like that. Cool. Now this driver was a little nice guy and he never said like, hey man, I really wanna go home. And then this dispatcher kept running and kept running and didn't even bother asking. This is a real example, this is no made up story. And this guy was like, hey, I uh, kept sending him, kept dispatching loads. And then he came to a point, he was like, you know what? Screw this, I'm out of here. They don't even care like when I wanna be home. He didn't even ask. So sometimes, you know, like every driver have a different kind of personality. Somebody's shy, somebody's outspoken. Somebody just does, doesn't wanna talk to people, just love trucking and don't bother that person. And that's how it goes. But your job as like the people in your company, like planner and driver managers, they need to be consistently be in touch with truckers, making sure that they're aligning the truckers needs with what they're about to do. If the trucker wants to be home to every week, then they're making sure that they get home week. Now here's the thing, if you're overworking these guys, which most companies do, most companies do, planners and driver managers are most of the time overworked, uh, okay, you know, like they have seven million things going on in their head. I've been in this position, like I was a planner in my past life. It's hard, you know, but what you need to do as a trucking business owner, like especially if you have a bigger fleet, you need to set aside time where the planners call the driver or they talk on the phone and they report that, okay, this is what the driver wants for this week. You have like a place where all this gets stored. If you don't do a discipline, none of this is gonna matter, okay? Like I can give you all the strategies and all the tips, but it's really about implementing it and doing it. You know, like uh, just saying like, oh, talk to your drivers nicely when they walk in the door. Yeah, that's good and fine. But these are the really bottlenecks of where things break a lot more. Cool, so when you keep them excited, well you can also, the other ninja strategy that I'm gonna say is, when you wanna make them excited and move them into advocate, here are the things. You can give them monetary, you know, let me, for any of you who don't understand what monetary and non-monetary means, is like, give them things, gifts or something that are, um, that are like purchased by like direct money or indirect money. So you know, like something like a um, safety bonus, okay? And I'll tell you how to do this. So that's a safety bonus kind of thing. You know, that, that's, that's a money, like you're giving their direct money to the driver. The other thing could be, you know, like, um, if I was to tell you, um, let me give you an example. Like this is, this is another example. So you give them like a um, hoodie and a jacket and a gear every every like six weeks they get shipped like a new um, hoodie and like a jacket or something like that. Like it's, it's not direct money, but it's like indirect kind of gifts to them. You know, like a mug or like an ELD, uh, not ELD, I would say like something more non-monetary value. Like I've seen like people give like gifts on like, you know, around uh, every quarter if they've, if they've done good, they also get a safety bonus, but they'll get like an air fryer or they'll get like a mini fridge put on into their truck 
or they get like a special uh, decal on their truck for like, you know, doing certain 250,000 miles. That's non-monetary value, okay? You're not giving money to them directly. You're just basically um, appreciating what they do. Now, here's a, something that I've learned from something in real estate, actually, and it's called real estate hack. I call it real estate ha hack. And this works really, really good. Okay, not too many people know about this, but what it means is, and listen to this very, very carefully. If you notice that realtors in your area they do not come, a, a smart realtor will send you uh, a flyer or whatever, and it would say how many homes that guy has sold in the area. He's, he or she's giving you social proof that look at me, I've sold all these houses and I can sell yours too and I sold them for this price or like in three days or four days. They're establishing like an authority figure and basically saying like, hey, I can sell this, maybe you should work with me. You know, it builds like a status in their mind. And you want to replicate the same thing in advocate position. And what I mean by that is, when somebody in your trucking business makes like some drivers, they get like two, 3,000 safety bonus or idling bonus, you want to email it to all the drivers and tell them, hey, uh, drivers, I want to congratulate John with me or Jason with me today that he or she, he has uh, set a record today of earning $3,439 of safety bonus for the month, for the first quarter uh, of 2021, okay? That's, when you say that to these drivers, they're gonna be like, if he made it, why can't I, you know? So, and if you keep sending those emails over and over, they're gonna, it's gonna push those drivers to make that extra money. And you could write an email, something like that, you know, like you're internally, whatever system you may use, you can be like, hey, John made this more money. I wanna put similar money in your account, in your pocket, or even more. Uh, let me know how we can help you achieve it. I can schedule a call with your driver manager, your safety manager, your HR, whoever may be. Let me know how I can help you. And CEOs or the company owner should send these emails. That makes a real, real touch to it, okay? So you have those, I call it the real estate hack because you promote like what's happening and then encourage people to do it. You know, it's like selling a house and bragging about it and then giving a bonus and bragging about it and then telling the drivers like, if he can do it, you can do it too. Why don't you do it? You know, so that's one way of pushing them to do that. And that's what actually will help improve your trucking business be more profitable, drivers working hard for you and sticking with your business because you're constantly showing them like how much money is floating around in this trucking company that they're in and it can be theirs uh, by doing these things and we're here to help them. You know, most drivers what happens is like they get a promise like okay, we're gonna get you 50 cents per mile and we're gonna go get you home this week and things get boring, nobody checks with them, they're running loads, it's just a boring organization, same load, same drop off, Life gets boring, nothing happens. But when you add a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of fun to like your work environment of things and uh, things that they can achieve, it becomes even better. Now, the other thing I wanna tell you here is something that I call badge of honor. Okay, badge of honor is basically, to give you a classic example is like, you'll see trucking companies when a truck driver has done like a million miles, they'll put a decal on their truck like, oh, done a million miles, and then that's a badge of honor. But what you can do is instead of like giving them like stupid certificates, which I've seen like, you give a driver like a piece of freaking paper of like running so many years and working with your company, that, that's just so garbage. Like why, what, would you like to be handed like a piece of paper after doing so much work for a trucking business? How, What's that gonna do for me, period? What, what is that gonna do for me? Give them something more that is like more exciting. You know, like give them like an award, give them like a big trophy or like a, like a, like a big framed, like a metal certificate kind of thing. Like it has to be something good. Like I see like trying to help me spending no money in doing this when it's like so easy. You know, like when you lose these drivers, then you have to recruit them and the cost for recruiting is anywhere from like 5,000 to like 10,000. Wouldn't you want to spend, wouldn't you want to spend like 
a hundred bucks to give them like a real thing. And what I've also seen is like in great memberships or like programs and like communities in one of the communities I am in, they give you like a special ring and it has like, I don't know if it has real diamonds on it, but it's like a pretty great ring if you, if you hit certain mark in, uh, in business and you get a ring. So give them a ring. Like I've seen trucking companies give them a ring and do that, like give something that's, that's valuable, a little bit expensive, not just cheap. They can go to a uh, Dollar Tree and buy it. Like, like giving them a piece of paper is not gonna serve them much. So give them something like real tangible that's like enjoyable. They look forward to other drivers feel envious of. That's when you're gonna bring that forces together and make these drivers work hard for you. Okay, so you have to create a badge of honor. Now, when you have them an advocate, you're in a pretty good spot. But what you wanna do is move them into being raving fans. And what I mean by raving fans is they become your basically your promoters, you know, like they, they go out and hunt the drivers, fight with drivers to bring them over to you. They post on their social media how amazing their truck is and um, you incentivize them, you incentivize them on promoting things, okay? It's basically right, running like an LMM, MLM, multi-level marketing kind of thing. You know, like, I won't say exactly, but it's something like that. You know, like how uh, they have to promote and if they promote and they sell something, they get a little bit more, you know? Similar to that, you know, like, and some training companies I, I come across, and I've done this in the driver journey training, like I go into a lot more depth than this. Again, if you haven't gone it, go pick it up. It, it will cost you less than, it costs to buy a lunch, like it's so much great value. I've done this special training for some of the biggest training companies, but I'm gonna stick to this. So what you wanna do is give them like a referral bonus of like, you know, at least three to five K. Like that's my minimum benchmark. You know, like these drivers are way, referral bonus should be way more than your recruiting bonus because these drivers are the best drivers to come on board. You know, like your buddy already knows what this person is about. Uh, I'm not saying it's in all cases, but in most cases, the referral drivers turn out to be the best drivers at all times. But you can do it if you're just paying the driver 500 bucks to promote for your trucking business. That's just not enough money, okay? Like 500 bucks doesn't do anything for anyone. Why would I bother going around and screaming for 500 bucks? I can make that in safety or like, idling bonus, like just making sure the truck doesn't run too long. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's it's not a good thing. You have to incentivize things. I don't understand. Um, now, you spend, you're ready to spend that much money here, but you don't want to spend it here. If you spend it here, you will never be in this area. You know, like hiring will never be an issue because these drivers come back right up here and the cost goes down. Your hiring cost goes down. Now, so to recap all the videos here, uh, the, the entire video here is when these guys get hired, they get pushed off from recruiter HR to your driver, planner, manager. Don't expect these guys to be the people or the heroes who are gonna save the drivers, okay? That's a big one. Now make sure these guys right here are like, you know, like they're like good extra words or they, these people like know what they're doing. You know, like they, you spend the money to improve their interpersonal skills. If you don't invest in these guys and make them work like crazy, you're not gonna have a company that's gonna have a lot of drivers stay with them. It's, you have to invest in your people. These things you have to do. If you don't do it, your driver uh, turnover rate is not gonna improve. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is make sure you have your numbers in check, okay? Circulate these numbers all the time. If you don't know your numbers, you're not gonna have a trucking business either. That's, that's good and it works because numbers is basically where you know how many trucks are open this week, how many drivers are hired this week, how many drivers left this week. Every week you update your entire team that this is where we stand. Okay, three numbers that you just need to keep in mind. It's not rocket science, it takes five minutes to run these numbers, and once you start doing it, it probably turned into like a one minute kind of thing because you already know what happened like two days ago. So you wanna circulate these numbers here. Invest in driver, manager, and planner for interpersonal skills. Give them a, basically make a little system where they call the driver and they make a note in the system that they talk with the driver and they joke around and these are the things that they found the driver wants this week, okay? Very important to do this kind of stuff. Advocate is where you get them excited. 
move them from excited and get them more excited to make them your advocate. So if I was to stop them at any place, they would always tell me good things about your trekking business, okay? So you talk about safety bonus, give them good safety bonus and tell them what other safety bonuses that they can do. I showed you how to do it through a real estate hack. Badge of honor, tell them about the badge of honor. Like, hey, if you hit certain miles or you hit certain money uh, with my trekking business, then I'm gonna give you this ring or this metal plate or some great kind of award, not just a piece of paper. And then promoter is where you incentivize them promoting for your trekking business. You know, referral bonuses, make them big. Incentivize them like, hey, if you share our post, we're gonna give you, you're gonna enter into where a hundred dollar gift card of pilot or something, you know? You can do that stuff. So that way you're getting more organic presence through your driver. So there's a lot of ninja strategies that I can give you. If you wanna learn those, again, go pick up Driver Journey. Uh, the link is below. So driver retention will solve if you think in your mind that you wanna move all your drivers from here to here. And one last thing. When if you have a driver that's ready to leave the business and it's like, I can't do, like I, I'm just leaving, like I don't want, do an exit interview. Not too many trucking companies do this. And one of my great friend who is actually, uh, he's actually a director of ops uh, in Winnipeg and he told me that one time a driver was leaving and he was like, you know what, he was a great driver, he runs hard and I was like, you know what, why don't we do an exit interview with this? We never done this in the past. So he was like, hey man, how can we help you? What, what's making you leave? Tell me, uh, I'm here to help you, no pressure. I know you're going, that's fine. Just tell me what we could have done better. You know, you give a driver a voice and opinion, that helps them a lot. And he said that the shop guy is such a pain that anytime he has to get the truck in, it takes like forever, he just doesn't talk nice to them. And that was the only reason why that guy was leaving. They were able to fix it and the guy stayed. You know, if, it, if that driver stays with you for another three years, how much more money you would make, right? So make sure you're doing like exit interviews. I'm gonna put it aside. You know, it also gives you an insight of what's going on, you know? And the other thing I wanted to uh, point out here, because there's so many good things that I can give you, but I just wanna give you the main one so you can actually do stuff. The other thing you wanna do is, have a survey. Do like at least two to three times a month. It's super easy to do, you just go to Google Forms, it's free, you can create a little form and ask them like questions about like, what they like about the trekking business, uh, are they getting the, the miles that they want, and all that kind of stuff. And then the CEO should send this thing and be like, hey, this is an anonymous survey, I'm not gonna be sharing your info with anyone, go fill out this form, send them an email, give them a link, and ask them like how the company culture is doing. You need to realize like back in the day, uh, when kings and like rulers, who, who had like great dynasties and like great kingdoms that they built, what they would do is they would dress up uh, like a normal uh, ordinary person or a citizen of their city or like their region and then they would roam in the streets and ask like what the price was of the orange or apple. They were working on the ground secretly to ensure that their company, their reign, their kingdom, their city, their town, their regions were being run properly even on the ground level and that's what you need to be doing now this takes a lot of lot of effort there's no two ways about it you need a dedicated person to like monitor and manage this because if you have somebody if you're trying to put this all on your recruiters you're overworking them they can't they, they can't focus on bringing more people but if you're uh expecting all the things being done from your driver manager that's bad too you know, like this, this takes a lot. So you have to appoint like one person who watches this. So if you have somebody who's, who you're gonna pay 40 to 50K a year to do this, that's not a good place to be, you know? If for 50K, like each driver is like 5K to hire 10 drivers, I'm sure they're gonna hold more than 20 to 30 drivers for you in your trucking business. I know this will make more sense when you are, you know, like when you have a lot more trucks running, you know, like I, my threshold would be like above 50, 60 trucks. If you have somebody, invest the money, it will make you more money, okay? Like we, we as business owners, sometimes we hold back on, on things that we should be spending money on because we're like, oh, we don't have the room for it. But do it because this is what's gonna make you more money. You know, like the only way to grow a trucking business is by having more drivers, owner operators, more trucks running, period. You know, like brokering freight is only goes so far. So this is the best way to do it. Anyways, so I gave you tons of value in this video. If you liked it, make sure you like, comment. If you have any question, comment below. Let me know if you wanted to learn more of any of these, uh, of the 
steps in the driver journey and I'll break it down for you. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because anytime I release a great video like this, it comes directly to you. And I wanna make sure all the trucking businesses that are out there, I get so many emails about like, hey Amrith, how can we do this? Hey Amrith, how can I do this? So I'm putting a lot of time into like educating as much as I can, giving you as much free value as I can. So in that way, you can make a better successful trucking business. Awesome, so if you wanna learn how to find more truck drivers, I'm doing an exclusive webinar. Go register right now, the link is below in the description as well. And thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next video.